All right, so how we can achieve our previous functionality in React? Well, we need to use a hook, basically a function that React provides, and the name is use state. As a quick side note, during this video, we'll heavily rely on the structuring array principle. And if you need to jog your memory, or if you're not familiar at all with this concept, I cover this in great detail in this JavaScript nugget video. And essentially, I just want to double check that I'm importing correct components. So notice, now I switch to use state basics. So that's the second file. And if we navigate here, this is what we will see. And effectively, we want to import from react the use state hook. Now we have multiple flavors, we can do it this way. So notice this is going to be a named import. So unlike let's say react, this is written like this. Now we're actually looking for the curlies and we go here with use state. And this is coming from react. Now I believe VS code is going to try to help us. So if you type here, use state notice, you'll right away get the import. Now alternatively, whatever logic we're going to set up in a component, you can also type it this way. You can just import react and then go with react dot and then use state. Just as a side note, this is also going to work. So once we have the use state hook, like I said, it's a function, we want to invoke that function, and we want to pass in the default value. And let's start from the very scratch, let's just invoke it in a log, just so you can see that whatever I'm telling actually is true. So let me save it, let me invoke it. And you know what, I'll clean the console, and I'll just refresh. And notice over here, like I said, we have function, we invoke it, we'll need to pass here the default value. And we get back two things, we get an array with undefined, and we also have the function. So this is going to be our state value, which we're going to change with the second argument with the function. And this also is going to be preserved between the renders. And don't worry if the render re render and all that sounds kind of fuzzy. Actually, we'll spend the next video discussing them in greater detail. So we have use state hook, and this is where we need to pass in that default value. That's why we have right now undefined. So if I'm going to type here, Bob, yep, this is going to be my value. If I'm going to type here one, then of course, you can already guess that I'll have the value over here one. So this is going to be my default value. And of course, you can pass here array, the object and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully that is clear. Now let's discuss how we can access these values. Now, the fastest way is to use array the structuring, but just to kind of prove the point that I'm not making this up, I'll access them one by one. So let me comment this one out. Let me just copy and paste. And let me assign to some kind of value. So in here, I'm going to say that this is equal to hello, again, we can change these values as we want. There's really no difference. And you know what? I'll actually remove this log, I don't need it anymore. I'll log the value. So let me go here with const. And this is equal to a value. And then since we're getting back the array, we can do it this way, where I'm accessing the first item, hopefully that is clear. So if I go here with value, you'll see over here, that it's actually hello. So whatever default value that I'm passing, and if I'll copy and paste in here, and if I'll say func, which actually stands for function, let me copy and paste here as well. And let's just log the function. So two things, the default value and the function that controls that value. Now, why array the structuring is technically better? Well, because we can use a one liner. So let me comment this one out. Then let's keep on moving and notice over here, I can simply go with const then I'm destructuring right away out items. So in my case, I'm going to go with count and set count. Now, as far as naming, it is a convention to go with set count, basically, whatever is the variable name. So if you have name here, then convention is to go with set name, but you don't have to. And I'll talk about some other conventions as well. For example, for booleans and all that, then we want to go with use state, and we want to pass in that value. Like I said, we can pass in the string, we can pass in the array, we can pass in number, whatever you want to pass in, this is going to be the default value. And this is going to be the function that controls it. Again, 
the reason why we went the long route is because maybe some people are not familiar with the syntax, which is totally okay. The first time I saw this, I was also like, hey, uh, what's happening over here? So basically, we're just destructuring these values. If you don't like the syntax, you can always use this one. But my guess is you'll stick with this one. And then in here, let's pass in that initial value. In our case, what is that? Well, we want to go with zero, correct? So this is where we're going to start. Then let's quickly, again, set up that button. I know that this is a little bit of repetition, but since we just started working in JSX, I think it's going to be a good practice. So let's go over here with heading four. Then we're going to go with you clicked, and then let's grab the actual count. So notice, not accessing some random variable. I'm actually looking for a count one. So the one that I'm setting up with you state. And I'll just say times here. Then we want to set up our button. So the same deal, type is equal to button, then class name, just so we have a little bit of CSS. And now let's also, again, set up that on click. And we want to set up the function. So in here, we want to go with const, and let's call this handle click. And inside of that function, what do we want to do? Well, we want to invoke the set count, right? So we're going to go here with set count. And before we pass the value, I just want to mention something very important. When we invoke set count, technically, we can pass here anything. So if I'll pass here a string of Bob, yes, instead of number, this will turn into a string of Bob. Just something to be aware of. Now, of course, in our case, we will increase the count. But this is a very important gotcha, and I see this a lot in the course Q&A. So I'll reference the handle click over here. And then as far as the count, what do we want to do? Well, we want to go with count and then plus one. That kind of makes sense, right? So let's save it. And by the way, I didn't add anything in a button. Let's say click me. And now, of course, we'll see that in the browser. And also, if you log, you'll see that count is nicely increasing. So again, let me remove everything here and check it out. It's really cool that now we're triggering that re-render. So every time we'll update this value using the function, the handler function, we will also trigger a re-render. So unlike the previous example where we were just updating the value, we didn't see anything. Now you can clearly see that everything works. And also what's really awesome, use state preserves this value between the renders. Now, I'm not going to do this right now since we have tons of examples coming up, but let's say if you were to set up another button and set up another callback function that increases that value, you'll see that this one will stay the same between the renders. So it's not going to go back to zero. And again, let me just emphasize one more time that we can pass here anything. So we need to be very careful. I could go here with let's say set count and i'll pass in the pants because why not so let me set up my pants here and check it out i start nicely here with zero everything is beautiful and then i have you clicked pants times which is great but probably not something you were expecting so those are the basics of you state again it's a function that we get back from React, it returns an array with two elements, the current state value and a function that we can use to update the state value. And in the function, we want to pass in the default value, basically whatever we will set up in the state, whether that is a string, number, array, and blah, 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 blah. And then every time we'll update that, we will trigger the re-render and the cool thing is we'll see the latest changes in the browser and also that value will be preserved between those re-renders so if you have six use state values and if you update one of them rest of them will stay as they are so they're not going to go back to zero so those are the basics of use state and up next let's talk about renders re-renders and all that cool stuff